Hello and a very warm welcome. It's the start of the second week at Euro 2020. Italy have beaten Switzerland and are the first team to qualify for the knockout stages. Joining me to discuss the Azzurri and everything else that happened on day uh, five of the Euros is sports journalist Firas El Eshi. Hello, Firas. Hello, Simon. Day six of the Euros, or rather. We start with Italy, the Azzurri, the first team to book their place in the last 16 after another commanding victory, this time against Switzerland. The score in that one, 3 0. A brace for Manuel Locatelli with goals either side of half time before Chire Immobile made it three late on. The Lazio striker has also scored two in the competition. Italy are now unbeaten in their last 29 games, 24 wins along the way. Impressive once again with three goals scored, none conceded. Firas Aleshi, you said after Italy's win against Turkey that they hadn't been tested. Yeah. Anything you saw tonight that has changed your opinion? I think it wasn't uh, much about the opponent, Switzerland, as much about the way they executed throughout the game. It was impressive. One of the things I love most about uh, watching football games is that we really, when we come across a good manager, a good coach, uh, we can actually watch how his brain functions on the, on the pitch. The way the players execute, the way they become instruments uh, in the game. It was just beautiful. Today, in terms of uh, defending, uh, the speed with which they covered the spaces, the, the speed with which they shut down any uh, opportunities uh, against the Swiss side, uh, it was impressive. Just when you think there's a counterattack, just when you think there is a gap, there is a place that they can go to, they just come back together in such harmony and in a nanosecond, it's gone. And then the way they executed counterattacks, which is so not Italian, by the way. You know, there's no Sicilian arguing. There's nothing. It just happens. Three touches and you're on the other side. Uh, Lucatelli's goal is something worth studying. You know, just three touches, literally. A long... He starts to move, of course. Absolutely. A wonderful pass. A long pass, very precise. The vision, the speed of the execution. Then the run, which I really appreciate because... Uh, when you're fresh, even if he, he was in 30 minutes, I think, into the game, uh, the run, yes, you are fresh. You, you are in a much better shape than the rest of the players. So use that in the, the first few minutes where you're on the pitch. He did that perfectly. He executed that run all the way to the box. And then he gets the ball that he has given in the first place. And it's in the, in the back of the net. Uh, perfection today. Mancini's full mark. I, I, it's so admirable to watch them and the way they play. So it's not much about Switzerland as much about the way they played themselves. Well, let's take a look how things stand in Group A after Italy's uh, victory. The Italians are, of course, top of that group with that impressive uh, win, whereas Switzerland are third. Victory in the Natties next match could still uh, take them through. That leads us quite nicely into the analysis of Wales's victory against Turkey. 2-0, goals from Aaron Ramsey and Connor Roberts, all but ensuring that Turkey will be heading out of the competition. And even though with the third place rule, it is still not guaranteed, Turkey very disappointing again. Let's hear from their head coach apologise for the performance. We are all sorry about this result. I know it's the same for you and for me, as well as Turks. We had ambition. We were expecting a better game, including the first match that we played against Italy. And we couldn't get any points from these two games. So I would just say that we're sorry because this team could have played much better than this. Firas, after listening uh, to the head coach there, what judgment do you have on this Turkish side who, can we say, are the biggest disappointment so far in the tournament? Uh, yeah, in many ways. Uh, but I think the coach is still to blame because when you see a lack of discipline, especially on the mental level, when the players uh, are arguing all the time, are out of the game easily, um, that's just the lack of the mental presence and the mental preparation. And you just can't play in the Euro with that. It's, it's such a beginner's mistake. Uh, so for that, I mean, before we even talk about the technical part of the game and the way they performed, that's just a huge mistake, a huge uh, fault to just get into the game with. And then, yes, the way they played, uh, a huge disappointment. Now they're with minus five. Uh, I don't see them qualifying among the best thirds. Uh, so, yeah, I think the Euro is, is wrapped and done and they can head to Istanbul absolutely disappointed. Yeah, gutting for Turkey. Uh, what about Wales, for us? Quickly on, on the Welsh, you know, they play Italy yeah. next, of course. Yeah. With four points, do you think they've done enough probably to qualify? I love the attitude 
Um, you know, they're not that team that can go all the way. A semi-final will be a huge achievement. Uh, all of Wales will be <laughs> extremely happy with that. Uh, but the attitude today with which they played, they, they, they pursued the game all the way till the end. And then when they were winning 1-0, uh, they pushed for a second in the very last uh, minutes of the game. And then Gareth Bale, uh, that question marks around this player. Um, yeah, it, it, he's been such a... A disappointment in the last few years with Real Madrid and, and, and Spurs but the way he played today where did that come from the leadership the mentality the presence uh, calling for the ball quite often the runs um, I loved all that and it just makes me wonder is, is it a question of a coach is it a question of the environment that he was in for, for so long because what a waste such a great talent that we saw today well, Wales, golf and Real Madrid in that order, I think the banner famously <laughs> said. Um, let's send our attention to the last game of the day. Russia beat Finland 1-0, thanks to a goal by Al Miranchuk. That result leaves Group B very open with Belgium, Russia and Finland all on three points. So, of course, Belgium and Denmark do have a game in hand. That game is tomorrow. Assuming Belgium come first, Firas, who do you see finishing second in this group? Assuming that Belgium comes first. Uh, you never know, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I see the Russians. Uh, this is a quite uh, experienced generation. They played the World Cup together and um, they played quite well. Um, uh, sadly, Denmark... So, so Russia to beat Denmark? Absolutely, yes. Uh, especially if Denmark loses tomorrow, uh, they will come with, you know the moral that they, they will know they, they're on their way out and uh, they will lack motivation, I guess, in front of a Russian team that will be playing for a second uh, or third position. If I'm going to be speculating, obviously, I, I, I can't tell the future, but from the way it looks on paper, Denmark will finish bottom and understandably uh, looking at the trauma they had to face in the first game. Well, just before we leave you, let's uh, take a look at Wednesday's uh, programme. It's already the start of uh, those uh, fixtures. Uh, one game from Group B, 3pm uh, Paris time, of course, and then we'll have the Ukraine against North Macedonia in that match. Denmark are up against uh, Belgium. The Rote Devils are the big favourites in that match and could also secure their qualification to the next round. The Netherlands then take on Austria at nine o'clock. The Dutch also in a very strong position. Firas, just before we leave everyone, very quickly, yeah. uh, your predictions for all three of those games? Uh, I have to see them again. I I, I predict the, the Dutch will continue their great run and, and win against Austria. Uh, Belgium, yes, obviously, clear, clear favourites. And Who's, Ukraine against North Macedonia? Ukraine is very surprisingly um, strong and powerful and present. So, yeah, Ukraine, obviously. Well, there we go. That wraps up our <laughs> Euro 2020 daily show on day six of the Euros. Ferris Seleshi, thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, for your analysis. A big victory uh, for Italy. For us, we'll be back and we'll be bringing you all the latest analysis, all the latest goals and all the latest dramas from the Euros. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France 24. Bye bye.